Jannatu. Jazakallah khair. May Allah Ta'ala uh, increase you and bless you and put barakah wherever you place your feet. Allahumma amin. Uh, it's an honor and pleasure to be here with you all today on this blessed Jum'ah. Uh, I ask Allah Ta'ala to allow us all to benefit from the hour and this day that the dua is mustajad, that the dua is accepted. Allahumma amin. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In alhamdulillah, nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiru. Wa na'udhu billahi min shuroori anfusina wa min sayyiyati a'malina. Man yahdihi lahu falamudillala wa man yudlil falahadiyala. Wa ashadu an la ilaha illa allahu wahdahu la sharika la. Wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluhu wa habibuhu wa safiyuhu wa khaliluhu. Ya ayuhal ladhina amanu taqu allah haqqa tuqatih. Wa la tamutunna illa wa antu muslimun. Ya ayuhal nas ittaqu rabbakum alladhi khalakakum min nafsin wahida. Wa khalaka minha zawjaha wa batha minhuma rijalan kathiran wa nisaa. Wa taqu allah alladhi tasa'aluna bihi wal irham. Inna allaha kana alaykum raqiba. Amma ba'd. فإن خير الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد أيها المسلمون إن ديننا خنيفة جاء ببيان العلاقات بين الأفراد المجتمع المسلم أكمل البيان فهي علاقة الشرعية مبنية على مودة والرحمة واللطف وقال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إنما المؤمنون الإخوة. Dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we begin forever and always by praising Allah سبحانه وتعالى and sending infinite salawat upon His noble messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, His beloved and our beloved. As to which proceeds, today's bayan will be centered around mahabba. Around the idea of loving for your brother and loving for your sister, that which you love for yourself, and with a particular theme that was uh, or a methodology a manhaj that was taught to the Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam by Allah azza wa jal. So we know that this religion of Al Islam that it has come to. Bismillah, uh, unmute myself. Okay, mashallah, good. It has come to uh, create mahabba, love, and gentleness and uh, justice between human beings. So anything that uh, is, is, is tied with creating love and creating justice and creating, uh, you know, mercy between each other, the Sharia came to establish that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this verse that the believers are brothers and sisters for one another, that we're brothers and sisters for one another. And whatever establishes that brotherhood, this is which we should try to hold on tightly to. So there's a very beautiful... Uh, a very beautiful mannerism that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And you can find it um, in the Quran with Allah ta'ala dealing with Iblis. When Allah ta'ala uh, asked Iblis, why did he not uh, prostrate? When he commanded all of the angels to prostrate, he said, Aba wa stakbara wa kana min al kafirin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he denied, he turned away. And indeed he was from the kafirin, he was from the disbelievers. And Kana here is Mahdi, so he was from the disbelievers for a very long time. However, Allah Ta'ala allowed him to stay in his position until that which was inside of him came out. And this is in Surah Al-Baqarah. But in another verse in the Quran, you find Allah Ta'ala asking Iblis, Ma mana'aka? That what caused you not to prostrate when every uh, when the angels, as he uh, ordered them to prostrate, when they prostrated? What caused you not to prostrate in this particular situation? Um... So the, the hikmah and this, the beauty in this was that Allah Ta'ala knew Iblis, his intention, what he was. He knew that he was a disbeliever inside. He knew that he was arrogant, that he was haughty. But he still asked him, why did you do this endeavor to allow him, one, to think about what he was doing? Tafakkur, tadabbur, what am I doing? What have I done? What really caused me not to prostrate? Secondly, if he knew that he was wrong, to give him an opportunity to correct his behavior. Say, Ya Allah, Ya Rabbi, I am wrong. I made a mistake, Ya Rabbi. But he didn't. He said, minhu. I'm better than him. That you created me from fire and you created him from clay. So at this point, he was given an opportunity to explain himself, to perhaps repent, to make tawbah, to return back to Allah Azza wa Jal. But he responded back with arrogance. 
So this is a sunnah, this is a manhaj. This is not only the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you find in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam implementing this very, uh, this very act. And that you find in Hantip, who was a companion of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made the intention to, uh, to engage in the Fath al-Makkah, to return back to Mecca for conquest, that he kept it very secret. And Hatib, one of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was also one of the ones who fought in the Badr, the Battle of Badr, that he informed uh, uh, Ahl al-Mecca, the people of Mecca, by way of a letter, uh, and told them, this is the plans of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he intends to come this day, we are on our way, and he gave it to a woman. Now, Andrew Jibreel alayhi wa sallam was sent to inform the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, what this companion had done. Now, he sent Ali, and when Ali said, now Ali got there, radiallahu uh, they asked the woman, you know, to, where's the letter, you know, and, and couldn't find it, and searched it, couldn't find it. So he, he turned back. But in going back, he realized that, wait a minute, if the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that the letter is there, be a imkan, the letter is there. It has to be there. So he returned back and gave an ultimatum. He said, either that you give us the letter or we will be forced to search your person. So under these uh, circumstances, she told them to turn around and she removed the letter from her hair. Now she removed the letter from her hair and uh, they took it back to the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He read the letter and sure enough, the letter was from Hatib it's detailing uh, the, the, the conquest of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or his intention to conquest. At this point, Sayyidina Umar, say, uh, hand on sword, was ready to take off the head of Hatib. And the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked them, ma hamalaka ala ma sanat? What caused you to do this, yes, yeah, 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 Hatib? Like, what was, the re what was your reason? What was your line of thinking? What was the condition that, that caused you to do such an act? And Hatib essentially said, Ya Rasulullah, I don't prefer kufr, I don't prefer disbelief over Islam. And I don't prefer the disbelievers over the believers. The only thing is that I am the only one here that does not have relatives in Mecca. My family is there. My business is there. Uh, but I don't have anyone to protect my family. So if word gets out that we are coming for the conquest of Mecca, my family will be the first family that's killed. So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that she spoke the truth. But Sayyidina Umar, he wasn't satisfied, satisfied with this. He said, allow me to take his head, Ya Nabi. Allow me to take his head, Ya Rasulullah. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, no, Ya Umar. Perhaps Allah Ta'ala looked at the people of Badr and said that, I forgive you for whatever it is that you've done. So, but look at the, look at the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asking him, yeah, 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 Hatib, what caused you to do this? Because many times we see people's actions, but we don't know the circumstances that gave birth to those actions. We don't know people's intentionalities. We don't know what's in the heart of an individual. So the least that we can do is ask them. But we find in this day and time that when someone does an action that we, uh, you know, automatically assume to know what the intention was uh, of the person was, even if they did the action in the first place. Sometimes we don't even know if they did it. It's by hearsay. Someone said that such and such did this or, you know, said this, and we automatically assume that they did this thing. And even if they did do it, we assume to know why they did it uh, and what was condition in which they said it. Uh, one of the, the ulama said that if you see someone committing a sin, Tomorrow, don't call this person a sinner. Perhaps in the nighttime that they uh, repented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have another example of this uh, with Abi Bakr radiallahu anhu. Uh, that, he was, <clears throat> that he was with a, 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 a Jewish man. And this man began to uh, you know, say things about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That you know, Allah ta'ala is faqir and we are aghniya. That we are you know, uh, rich and Allah ta'ala is poor. And saying these things. So Abu Bakr radiallahu anh, he hit him and you know, he essentially bloody his face and the man went to the Nabi and he said that if it wasn't for an act, uh, a peace treaty that was between me, you, me, you and I, that I would have done worse, that I would have taken your head. So this man went to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi and he said, look what your companion has done to me. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi said to Abu Bakr, ma hamalaka ala ma sanat. What caused you to do this, O Abu Bakr? And he said that this man, he was uh, you know, he was being disrespectful, he was being uh, arrogant, that he was being haughty, and he was disrespecting Allah Azza wa Jal, and because of that, غضبتو, that I became very angry, but my anger was not for myself, it was for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what he told him, so uh, the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa asked him, why did you do this? And he was justified in his anger. And it said, uh, and in another narration, مَرَّ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وسلم, uh, بِرَجُلٍ يَبِيعُ طَعَامًا that said the Prophet ﷺ, he, one time he passed by an individual man and he was uh, selling food. 
And what he was doing was he was mixing the old food with the new food as to make the food last longer. You know, many places do this. Uh, and then the Prophet asked him, ma hamalaka ala ma sanat? He asked him, what caused you to do this? He said, aradtu an yanfiqa. فَقَالَ لَهُ النَّبِي صلى الله عليه وسلم He said that I wanted to sell the food. I wanted the food to last uh, uh, longer. And he said, مَيِّز He said that separate the two foods. That don't be unjust. That indeed, that uh, غِش is not from, you know, مَنْ غَشَّنَا فَلَيْسَ مِنَّا That whoever cheats people is not from amongst us. So this is, was the sunnah of the Nabi صلى الله عليه وسلم that he will always ask his companions, what caused you to do this? What was, the, what was your reasoning? So in this day and age, when we have much of cancel culture and we hear say people are doing things and we automatically jump to, um, you know, jump to assuming that we know why they did what they did and assuming, you know, judge, jury, and, and we give them the verdict. Rather, the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to allow the person to explain themselves, to give them an opportunity to at least, why did you do this? And this is something that we can implement not only with our you know, friends, but with our families, with our children, with our teachers, with our uh, contemporaries, with our, you know, colleagues, that whenever we are in a situation where somebody does something that's seemingly um, troublesome or seemingly ennoble or seemingly haram for the haram police, um, that we ask them, what caused you to do this? And there's a very interesting story um, that Ubaidullah Evan shares about a man who used to be the mu'adhan at a masjid. And uh, this man, he was, you know, known to everyone to be, a, a, you know, a, a seemingly righteous person that he was praying all the time in the masjid and he was very beloved by all the people of the masjid. So there were some brothers that said that this guy, he has to be fake. You know, there has to be something wrong with him. Nobody is this good. Let's, let's follow him home and see what he's doing. So imagine this brother, he prays a lot. He's walking home, minding his business. They follow him to his house and they find him on his porch and he's smoking marijuana. So they, you know, this is like Haram police to the next level. They jump out of the bushes and say, hey, we caught you essentially. This is Haram. We're going to tell the Imam. So this brother, he continues smoking. He says, Allah already knows that I smoke. Allah already knows that I smoke weed. What do I care if you tell the Imam? SubhanAllah. And this reminds me of the, the hadith of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he says that from a perfection of a person's religion is tarku ma la ya'anik. In many situations, if you wish to perfect your religion, if you wish to save your akhirah, it's to essentially mind your business. It's to mind your business. There's certain things that don't even concern you, the actions of people, the niya of people, uh, what people are doing in the privacy of the home. Allah Ta'ala is a satir. If Allah Ta'ala covers them, it's not for you to expose them. Because if Allah exposes you, there will be no one to aid you. So this brother already said, now that you're here to expose me, you've seen what you wanted to see, but Allah Ta'ala already knows who I am. So I don't care what the Imam says or what do, do the Sukhan, this place, the, the, the residents of this area think. What I do is between me and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they didn't even ask him, what was your situation? What caused you to do this or whatever? And even if they did, it was none of their business anyway. So the, we have a lot of this going on. So the, you know, the idea today is to remind ourselves to be compassionate. As the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was alameen. He was merciful. And that the signs of the believers is that we are merciful to one another, that we are forgiving for, of one another, we make dua for one another. As the Sahaba would say to each other, that if I saw uh, one of my companions drinking alcohol, huh, or what I thought to be alcohol, his beard was soaking in, in alcohol, I would, say to, uh, I would say to myself that perhaps somebody poured it on to him, that perhaps somebody poured alcohol onto him. Uh, and if they said, I would see my, if I saw my companion doing something that was seemingly haram, I would say perhaps that is my eyes that has deceived me. That is me, that I have the aib, that I have the, the, the issue in my eye, in my seeing, but rather it wasn't my brother that did it. So where are we from amongst this, the akhlaq of the companions in the way that they used to deal with each other? That if Iblis, uh, Rajim, the cursed one, that if Allah Ta'ala can give him an opportunity to explain himself, then how much more for the believers, how much more for the Muslims, how much more uh, for those who, for the ummah of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. مَا حَمَلَكَ عَلَى مَا صنعت. So the next time, بِذِنْ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى That someone is doing something uh, that, that is seemingly, seemingly haram or seemingly noble or seemingly uh, bad uh, that we ask them, if it has something to do with us rather, if we intend to make islah, if we intend to give nasiha to someone, then we ask them, what is going on with you? What happened to you? Did you do this? And why did you do this? How can I help? Uh, this is the best way. And, and sometimes an explanation 
that you will find a great benefit in asking someone, allowing them the opportunity. And even if they're wrong, if they were indeed guilty of that which you assumed or that which you thought they were guilty of, that it allows them an opportunity to reflect. Now, subhanAllah, I did do this. I am wrong. And I can do better. Akuli kodi hada, astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Thank you for those beautiful reminders. Um, really appreciate you taking the time to uh, join us and we hope that we can have you back and listen to your poetry. And I definitely recommend that you all check out his books. Um, I'll post his website again in the chat. Um, he has published a couple of books. Uh, Mawadda is one and Woke is another one, but some, some really good poetry books and I'm sure he will be producing more. So keep uh, in touch with him, keep informed, um, inshallah. And so uh, now as is our practice to follow up the bayan with a dua from a sister, please join me now in making dua. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Oh Allah, our Lord, Lord of mercy, Lord of compassion, guardian sustainer of the universe, truly all praise belongs to you and to you alone. Send your peace and blessings abundantly upon our beloved messenger Muhammad, the mercy to mankind, the kindest to his family. Bless the family of Muhammad and his companions and all the righteous men and women who followed him truly. Ya Rab, we thank you for guidance, for gathering us on this day of Jummah, the last Jummah of the Hijri year. Make this a blessed gathering from among those that you accept with your pleasure. Ya Rab, we long to reunite in person after a long time apart. We ask that you facilitate for us and that wherever we are, you keep the hearts of this community connected, that you protect us from our enemy shaitan who seeks to divide. Ya Rab, unite our hearts in love for one another for your sake. Help us celebrate our differences and diversity. Pour down your mercy upon this community. Forgive us where we have wronged and guide us on the straight path. Make this a righteous community that serves as an example and that benefits the entire ummah and humankind. Ya Rab, thank you for our teachers, our mentors, our guides. Please preserve them and increase them. On this blessed day, we ask especially for mercy to be upon our beloved teacher, Imam Sahib, that you continue to elevate his ranks by the continuous charity and good works done in his name, his teachings that continue to benefit, and all of the students and children who continue to pray for him. Ya Rab, grant continued strength to his wife, Arshi, to his parents, his sister, niece, and nephew, and all of those who love him and miss him dearly. Ya Rab, help us to walk the path of our teachers. Grant us beautiful manners that open the door to your mercy and knowledge. Help us in our quest to attain beautiful character, the character of those whom you love, the repentant ones, the excellent ones, the pure ones, the God reverent ones, the patient ones, the ones who rely upon you and the upright ones. Ya Rab, mold us into servants who are beloved to you in the way of our messenger Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. Make us true reflections of your attributes of mercy, of compassion, of, of gentleness. Let others come to know you and love you through us. Let others come to know your messenger and love him through us, just like our beloved Imam Suhaib did for so many of us. Ya Rab, keep us firm and strong in our faith with deep roots that nothing can shake. Ya Rab, you know our personal struggles. Grant us success in our trials to respond only in that way which is most pleasing to you. Help us to be merciful towards one another and towards ourselves along the way. Keep us from ever despairing in your mercy or feeling above your judgment. Balance our hope and fear and in all that we do. Well, uh, we, we are inherently weak and we turn to you for strength. Forgive us for our forgetfulness, our ingratitude, our arrogance. Truly, we're in need of your grace. Help us to remember you, be grateful to you, and do good, sincere deeds that are accepted by you. We ask this all not by our hope in our own deeds, but by our hope in your infinite mercy. For you are near and you offer us countless opportunities to turn back, to draw nearer. Help us to seize these opportunities to expose ourselves to the divine breezes you send. Ya Rab, when you call, may we respond, and may we respond in the first moment. Fill our every moment with thicker remembrance and shukr, gratitude. Grant stillness to our hearts and coolness to our eyes for all of the bounties that you have gifted us. Ya Rab, you are our protector, our helper, our light. Help us navigate the uncertainty and chaos in the world from the pandemic to the wildfires to global strife and oppression. Heal us completely, our bodies, our minds, and hearts, and make us a means for healing the earth. O oh Allah, we ask by your most comprehensive dua to grant us the best of this world and to grant us the best of the hereafter. To you we belong and to you we return. Please have mercy upon all of our loved ones who have returned to you. And may we return to you with our hearts at complete peace and content with you and you with us. Send peace upon Muhammad, the seal of the prophets, and upon all of the prophets and messengers who came before him. Grant us their company, Ya Rab, in the hereafter, by your mercy and your grace. Amin.